Hello everybody and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope we're doing well and today we'll be doing a box office preview for this coming weekend which sees new releases Halloween Kills and The Last Duel coming out as well as No Time to Die's second weekend in the domestic marketplace and of course Venom Let There Be Carnage opening up in other markets as well. Before going any further though talking about these numbers please make sure you smash that like button, line up that fire button if you're watching on Odyssey and also make sure you're subscribed to the channel with that bell notification on that way you know every time a new video or live stream goes live on the channel so first things first halloween kills based on these estimates and based on the now uh officially announced budget of 20 million dollars for halloween kills is expected to break even if these numbers indeed hold after just one weekend and this is with a day and date release over on peacock as well so very interesting to say the least about what's going on here with halloween kills being one of the first films i think during pandemic times at least to break even on its opening weekend and again that is if these numbers currently hold it's coming out at over 3,700 theaters expected to make around 48 million dollars and if you look to my handy dandy chart over on ombreviews.com again free to use ombreviews.com box office tracking you'll notice that Halloween kills indeed 20 million dollar budget means that the total cost with marketing is going to be somewhere around 30 million meaning the break even number is around 45 million dollars and so as you can see just from the domestic number alone of 48, if it indeed holds or if it overperforms, it will have broken even by the end of the weekend. So we'll be tracking that to see if we will have officially our first and only film during the pandemic times and in a very long time to break even during its actual opening weekend. All the while, No Time to Die in its second domestic weekend is expected to have a 55% drop to $25 million and is expected to cross the $100 million domestic number. This is definitely a stronger hold for this movie, especially after a, um, let's just say an underperformance in its opening weekend. They were expecting it um, in some estimates to make up to 80 to $100 million domestically in its opening weekend, and it only, only made it up around maybe 55, 56 million, and then they tried to extend it saying, well, the holiday weekend, it made over 60 million domestically. Either way, it was very much an underperformance in that capacity. Still making a decent amount of money worldwide in certain markets, but still has a very long way to go to actually break even. Venom Let There Be Carnage is going to have another 50% drop, making another 15.9 million, putting it up to $168.6 million. And so therefore, uh, Venom Let There Be Carnage getting a little bit closer to 200 million. Again, it's going to be a bit of a stretch to actually get to and cross that number, but it is definitely going to be, I think, by the end of the weekend, reaching its point of profitability, its break even number, because it is opening up in several countries this weekend that had not been previously opened in. And that's going to be kind of the story with Venom is that it has a lot of markets that it still needs to open in before we have any idea of how well or how not well it did. And a very similar situation also with No Time to Die because it opened up in foreign markets before domestic. And so it also has some markets to open in as well. And so it'll be a little while before we're able to tell exactly whether or not No Time to Die or Venom will actually reach that point of profitability. Venom only needs to make a little bit more money though in order for it to break even. And I think that it could very well do that this coming weekend if it makes enough in these markets. And obviously, a $15.9 million third weekend is actually a, a pretty strong hold for it. And I think that this is something that we could see going forward. The Last Duel, which is the new 20th Century Studios film, new really Scott film, making $8.4 million coming out at 3,000 screens. So it is a wide release from Ridley Scott here. And I will say, though, that there is no... A reported budget of the film, but if you actually look to the trailer and the fact that it's well over two and a half hours long, there is, I probably would imagine, a good guess that this film is easily north of $50 million in its actual production budget, um, just because of them seemingly using a lot of practical effects and real sets and uh, a lot of makeup and costuming, and so... You know, set during a medieval time and a middle, medieval era, so it'll be interesting to see exactly what the official production budget for that film ends up being when everything is said and done, but an $8.4 million start, not very strong. We'll see how it does worldwide this weekend, however, not looking all that great for it. Adam's Family 2 still hanging around, Shang-Chi also still hanging around just a little bit, and as I said, everything that Shang-Chi makes from this point forward, since it has reached its break-even number... It's just going to be more net gains, net profits. So this would put it over $217 million uh, in the domestic market. By the way, it is interesting that at 915 screens, Free Guy is still going to make around $720,000 
this having been out now for a couple of months, at least it's already available for free on, on uh, Disney Plus if you have access to a VPN and can set it to the UK region as it is available for free in certain ra- mar- certain markets and certain regions around the world. But this is interesting. Again, Halloween Kills expected to break even in its opening weekend. And this just goes to show you, right, if you have a lower budget film and you're able to kind of you know tap into a certain fan base, you can make films for very cheap and make some money off of it. Imagine if the studios decided to start to make new properties and new original content for low money and try to basically create new fans, create new universes, and create new ideas to bring new audiences in. Wouldn't that be an amazing concept? And hey, it shows you that, guess what? It's it's possible. It's possible to spend very little money and still be able to make some pretty decent profits. And I think other films that we have come out in the past with even lower budgets, micro-budget level even, things like The Blair Witch Project being a great example of that, can be very successful. So it's interesting and sad that Hollywood has really seemed to run out of ideas because Halloween Kills is the, you know, whatever number film in the Halloween franchise. And even though I personally am a fan of the Michael Myers series, I was originally going to go see this film actually today. But because of uh, timing and scheduling, I was not able to uh, do that. So I might try and see this at some point in the future. But with that being said, uh, it is still one of those films where, again, it's a perfect film to watch during this time of the year. Because, hey, the film's name is Halloween of all things, and it's hard not to get excited for things like that. Also, Halloween Ends apparently has already been uh, scheduled to release for next year, probably filming it around the same time, I imagine, for them to get that kind of a quick turnaround for it, but it does seem to indicate, I guess, the fate of what's going to happen at the end of this film, just because of the fact that there's going to be another one, but hey, We'll have to wait and see what happens and exactly what direction it decides to go into. But what are your thoughts about this? Are you excited for Halloween Kills coming out this weekend? Do you expect it to reach that $48 million to break even in its opening weekend and also for No Time to Die? Uh, what do you think is going to happen with this film? Because, again, it still has to make $750 million at least, at least worldwide to break even. And it still has a long way to go there. And, of course, also with Venom 2, Let There Be Carnage, do you think that film will reach its break even point this weekend as well. Let me know those thoughts and anything else in the comment section below. If you like this video, smash that like button, light that fire button on Odyssey. You're all amazing and beautiful people. Huge shout out to uh, uh, Bifford the Hobbit and also uh, <laughs> Kara Tharp over on uh, Locals.com. Uh, again, I need to make sure I get that uh, October video updated for y'all. Anyway, you guys are great. Have a wonderful day, everybody. And as always, God bless. And now for a huge shout out to all of my Patreon subscribe star and Locals members. Andrew Hoyle, Animation Commentator, Brandon, Brian P., Christopher Bowman, Don Bruno de la Mancha, Father Christopher Miller, Hail to you, Father, Father Damian Cook, Garrett Searles, Harold Francis, Inflamed Wood, Jacob Juice, Jeffrey Toon, Joe Horn, Jonathan Carney, Gomer Kyle, 79, Laura, the Modern Major General Story, Mike Jackson, Dion, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mondo Spieler, Mr. Peabody, On to June, Orange Hat Reviews, Out of Step with Reality, Priscilla Hall, Rosetta Allen, Stan Andrian, Teresa Martin, Theodore Benin, Tina Bojan, and Tina B, the Empress of the Universe. Thank you for being my Patreon members, and a huge shout out to my subscribe star members: The R, Fast Reaction, Nosferatu Gatsu, John B, Perpetual Punster, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., Dean High Slash, the new number two, J. Rod, the Beer Guru, and ZK Man. Thank you very much for supporting me over on Subscribe Star and to my one Locals member, Robert Barnes. Thank you for supporting me over on Locals. And if you want a name shouted out, or your name rather shouted out at the end of every single live stream and video, please consider joining on one of those platforms, either Patreon, Subscribestar, or Locals. Links to that can be found in the description. Look at that top link especially. It's called the Willow link there. It'll give you links to all the social media platforms and also ways to support the channel. If you want to be an Army of Asgard level or above member, you can get access to giveaways that I do every single month. I give away 4Ks, Blu-rays, all kinds of stuff. It is a lot of fun. Also, if you join at the Keeper of the Bifrost level, you get access to all of that. Plus, you get access to an exclusive podcast that I do with John the Flick Pick Flick and 
Messenger. We have a lot of fun. We do that once or twice a month. And if you join at the Chosen of Valhalla level, you get all that. Plus, in your first month, you get a t-shirt of your choice and send anywhere in the world. And also, you get to be featured on the channel once a month on the Chosen of Valhalla live stream where we get to hang out and have a good time. So anyway, if any of that sounds good, check out that link in the top of the video as I mentioned. You guys are amazing and beautiful people. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless.